We come now to continue our short series here on uh, thinking about uh, changing our focus and uh, in order to change our reality and in so doing create a better community for each of us to live with. And in that sense uh, community, we're going to look today at Gaduji, which is, uh, in short, means community, but uh, we're also going to look at the other aspects of it and what it takes to really build a healthy community. So, to begin, let's open our Hebrew Bibles to Psalm 133, Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there God ordained God's blessing, life forevermore. And we're going to turn to our uh, New Testament reading today, which is uh, Hebrews, well, let's see here, Anik, we love, Ayadolami 10, 23 through 25. So that's uh, Hebrews 23 through 25, chapter 10. As ya, de gine yon se isti, gane ge son, ni gane ne la, uduchi, ni gane son, ni gane la si na, e mana, na de la, li da sta, na ino, na zgi, udisti ta, na hi, ge son, ale. De da da da, na tes da gi zdi, a ge, a da ge yandi, ge sam a le, is da, di garla, is da ne ti, ge sam, di ga da ni le da ti ya, di gi ne, is da ne di ye. Kles di yo, po ye da sa le, Go sadi, he da da kli sadi, to ha in, he ga na, na zgi, he yu na da, ne di, si gi, de zja da, wo ne, he zgi, zdi, zgi na, ha le, ho, hu ga we na, ste di, na zgi, ni ja da, ne he zdi, ji ji go wa di, hu zkwa, la he di son, na he ya he ga. Amen. In English, we're going to turn to Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Many people struggle with being able to build healthy, functional relationships and spiritual communities. And as we talked about last week, pride, the uh, foundation of all our dysfunctional behaviors, our character defects, 
prevents people from really looking at their character defects. Because pridefulness wants us to believe that we are perfect as we are and there's nothing wrong with us and needs to be fixed. And yet, when we are unable to build healthy functional relationships and sustain healthy functional communities, which can also include families, then we have to look at why there is that problem. And, you know, this has to do with really looking at the concept of authentic community. I mean, everybody's got problems, everybody's got challenges, many things cannot be overcome real easily or quickly. Uh, many people have been subjected to a wide range of traumas and abuses that uh, affect one's behavior, one's way of thinking, and, uh, and some, you know, it, it takes a lot of work for people to be able to separate that emotional attachment to these things so that they can move forward at least in a better way, even if they never are able to forget. They can come to a place where these things no longer have power over them and control their behaviors and choices. And, uh, you know, uh, it happens. Um, in order to achieve that, though, there has to be a willingness to surrender. Well, before we get to surrender, there has to be a willingness to acknowledge that there are character defects, that there are things about ourselves that need to be worked on. And uh, it is necessary to do this in order for us to be able to step forward with the healing process and with allowing ourselves to surrender these character defects to our Creator. And, uh, one example of this, you know, being my background in, in counseling and, and ministry all these years, uh, being an Indian religious leader, I've worked with many people in various forms of recovery programs, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Sex uh, Anonymous, you know, uh, all kinds of anonymous programs. and. Uh, also many people who are victims of these things. And uh, they all use a 12-step program. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, they have the big book, is what they call it, they call it the big book. I don't have it here with me. And uh, I apologize for that. I usually bring examples to show people. I like to, you know, we're Indians are visual. We like to visually show things. But uh, anyway, uh, step six, in the 12-step programs identified by uh, the authors of the Alcoholic Anonymous, I think Bill is his first name, I can't remember the, the last name, but uh, it reads, we're, we're, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And that's on page 63 of the big book, which uh, I'm trusting that because I actually got it off the internet and I don't know if that's changed. But, uh, at any rate, um, it's a very powerful sentence. And, you know, having a willingness to surrender uh, is a big step. Because first and foremost, it has to acknowledge that there's something wrong that needs to be surrendered. And, you know, this sentence here says we're entirely ready. So not only has there, there has to be a willingness to acknowledge there's something wrong, you also have to move into that place where you actually get to the point where you're ready to let it go. And that's another huge step on in itself because acknowledging that there's something wrong doesn't necessarily mean that people are willing to do what it takes to, to change it and to change 
himself. Because it does take work. It takes great courage to do that. And of course, people in recovery, you know, they don't have much choice. They've hit bottom in their lives. Probably many of them have lost everything. They're not. All of them have lost everything. And so they're highly motivated to get to that place, although there are a number of them that still don't. And they keep repeating those self-destructive cycles over and over again. Back in the late 70s, a, uh, a doctor actually took a look at this. And the, the Dr. Bill Hedler of the National Wellness Institute created a model called the Six Dimensions of Wellness Model. And, uh, and he points out that in order for a person to actually be whole, all six of these dimensions have to be addressed. All six of these dimensions have to be restored to harmony. And these six dimensions include Occupation, because each of us need to feel valued and that we have a purpose. And so we have to feel, we have to do what we need to do as far as education, specialized training, whatever we need in order to achieve that occupational purpose for which we feel called to do. And we must follow the call of our heart. If we do not follow the call of our heart, we will spend our lives being frustrated, resentful, uh, apathetic, and, and in many cases, uh, destructive. And so it's important that we acknowledge the call of our heart and do what we need to do to fulfill that purpose. Then we also look at the physical, which is the second component, at least, I'm, I, you can see the chart here, and I'm actually, I started out working my way around the wheel of the sacred hood, because I'm used to starting at the north and working my way around the, the medicine wheel. And so we are looking at, I'm treating like a medicine wheel. Uh, so we're looking at the physical aspect, which means we have to acknowledge our physical bodies and the state in which they exist. And we have to take responsibility for taking care of of our physical bodies. And here in the Midwest, right here in Oklahoma, you know, there's a corn-fed country, as the saying goes. And, you know, I see it day in and day out where people who are uh, suffering from low self-esteem, low self-worth, instead of making an effort to become a better person, to heal their wounds, are stuffing themselves with uh, toxins and, and bad foods that are causing all kinds of uh, health problems, diabetes, uh, cancers, uh, obesity. Obesity is a huge problem here in Oklahoma, you know, all over the South. You know, uh, fried food here where I live, or down here where we live, I mean, you go into the, into the barbecue places and just about everything's brown. And what's up with that? I mean, that's not healthy at all. It's just you might as well just be eating a bowl of fat. And that's not good for us. Uh, so anyway, taking care of yourself physically is a huge part of it. And socially. It's the third component, socially. You know, um, we all need people to be around. We all need to have fun, laugh, joke, have a good time. We've got to take care of ourselves. So it's important to balance things out. We can't be whole and we can't be well if we're not engaging in fun stuff. So socialization, getting, getting out there, you know. And uh, the next is intellectual, which ties into occupational, and, you know. Uh, the human brain has the capacity to learn until the day you die, the moment you die. The brain just keeps right on going. I've talked about this before. Where the brain changes to support new ways of thinking, new ideas, uh, new new beliefs and values, and uh, prunes out the old, you know. Uh, so the intellectual component to this is very important. And you continue to grow in your understanding of our Creator and the world around us. Yeah, it's, it's very important for being whole and healthy and 
in the world is getting out there, engaging in social justice and uh, improving yourself. And then the next component is spirit, which ties directly into the 12 step program we were talking about earlier and about character defects. The spiritual component and the emotional component, which is the sixth component, go hand in hand as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, you cannot be spiritually healthy if you're not emotionally healthy, and you can't be emotionally healthy if you're not spiritually healthy. So it's important that whatever your spiritual calling is, is that you honor it, and you strive to live it in a good way. And so that means building Gaduchi, building community. And that spiritual component starts and ends with community. In our Indian religious tradition, uh, community is everything. We're not just talking about family. We're talking about the extended human community. First and foremost, we cannot be spiritually, emotionally healthy if we are not building community. Because Gaduji doesn't just mean community, it means building community. We are always always striving to build community, welcoming people in to a good, a good place, creating a safe space for people to come and be healed of their wounds. And as, as spiritual people, we have an obligation in our relationship with God to build healthy, safe spaces for people to come and to welcome all people. Whoever spirit calls to come to be with us, we, we are obligated to welcome them. Whether they choose to stay is up to them. So we definitely create a space, a safe space, that people feel welcome. And uh, Dr. Hetler here says, if you're not doing that, there's something wrong. So uh, we're looking at uh, an emotional aspect of it as well. Like I talked about earlier, you know, we all we all have issues, and the question is, do we let our issues get in the way of building healthy community? So if that's something you're struggling with, you probably need to take another look at that. And one of the ways that we build community is through our storytelling. When we look at Hebrews here, in chapter 10, this little snippet here, you can look a little ahead prior to this reading and, and, and after it, and it's about uh, being of good service. So building community is about caring. It's about compassion. It's about, uh, you know, valuing others. And, you know, how can you value others if you don't value yourself? And so, when we get into the emotional aspect of this and its relationship to the spiritual aspect, we look at, you know, if we're not emotionally loving ourselves, then we are restricting ourselves from being able to love others. If we cannot love others, and we cannot build safe community. Building safe community is what human beings are all about. And if any of you are into sci-fi, uh, you know, there's a series, an epic series or a saga that came out some time ago called Babylon 5. And uh, towards the end of it, or through the, throughout the process of it, uh, they build community. And uh, Jakar, one of the aliens, is Narn, the character of Jakar, given a speech on his, uh, before he uh, took off on the journey, uh, talked about how human beings build communities. And so it is innate in our nature to want to build communities. And the reason communities don't last, don't survive, is because they're not meeting the needs of people. And the needs, the first and foremost need is that human beings need to know that they are loved and valued and wanted, welcomed. So that's a very important component to look at. And Gaduji, you know, uh, Stephen Woods, who is an associate professor here at Tulsa Community College, 
here in Tulsa at TCC, well, Tulsa Community College is one of the largest and most widely known uh, community colleges in the world. And uh, really pioneers in a lot of ways, in a lot of different directions. And they have a they have a Native American Studies program, and Stephen Woods here in Tulsa is one of the professors. He's also Cherokee, and he looks at uh, storytelling in relationship to uh, or how Gaduji influences storytelling. Storytelling is a is a key component to bringing communities together. And there's there's a couple of different ways the stories go, but but what Stephen really highlights at least for me, is how uh, Gaduji, the caring, uh, is at the core of everything we do. And storytelling begins with community, begins with Gaduji, and ends with Gaduji. Storytelling is about building community. Gaduji is about caring in order to build community. Are you, in your life, building community? If you look at the psalmist in Psalm 133, it starts right out with how much better is it when the people are together in unity? So the psalmist believes that God wants us to strive to live in community it won't be perfect all the time, not every day. It's not possible. You know, human beings, there's always something going on. But we do have to recognize if we have a willingness to build community in a caring way. Are you striving to build community in a good and healthy way? Because, you know, Hebrews right here in this 23 basically gives us a little guide in this section here, this one part that says it's through service which is caring. Through service we are to build good community. Community founded in, in relation with our Creator and all of creation. Striving to be in harmony with our Creator and all of creation and with each other. And so that means it's important for each and every one of us on a daily basis to strive to be in harmony within ourselves and within our relationships with others in order that we can build long-lasting, healthy, functional relationships on a personal level as well as in community. In order for this to be achieved, we all must have a willingness to do these things. So think about where you're at, who's around you, and whether or not you have a willingness to build healthy, functional relationships. And in so doing, have a willingness to build healthy, caring community. And do the people around you feel likewise. These are important. And you have to be honest with yourself about these things. Many spiritual communities in the last 20 years and even longer, and especially in these last few years, are dying off, fading away. Because people are unwilling to look at how their patterns of behavior are driving folks off bouncing from one relationship to the next, one community to the next, because they have a they lack courage and a willingness to do what it takes to get right with God and get right with the people, and strive to work together as one mind, one body, and one spirit in service. Without that, you will stand alone. That's something to think about. So what if, what 
what if you were willing to focus on creating and sustaining healthy, functional, spiritual communities dedicated to being of good service to God and to community? What if it all went right? Walking beauty. Whatever.